So we'll get started. So thank you so much for joining us today. We really appreciate it. So Dr. Rovin is uh, currently the Director of Nephrology um, uh, at the, o the Ohio State University School of Medicine in Columbus. I didn't want to forget the the. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he's, he's really a leader in the field of lupus nephritis. He got his undergraduate degree in chemical engineering at Northwestern and then went to the University of Illinois at Chicago School of Medicine and then did his training in in uh, medicine and nephrology at WashU, and then was recruited to Ohio State, the Ohio State University. Um, and then uh, he's had a very uh, distinguished career in investigation. His areas of research have included chemokines and glomerular nephritis, uh, urine and uh, uh, tissue um, proteomics and biomarkers. And he's been really pivotal in not only the basic and translational science, but in clinical trials too. So his career has been remarkable and that he has really spanned the entire spectrum of clinical research all the way from the lab to clinical trials. So, so he's published more than 200 papers. Uh, I won't go through all the uh, awards he's received and all of his accomplishments. He's been very well funded throughout his career, uh, including active R01s. And it's really a pleasure to hear from you today, Dr. Rovin, on managing lupus nephritis now and in the future. Thank you. It's it's a pleasure to be here. And um, boy, I, I sound really good the way you said that. I, I you should come to my university and talk about it. <laughs> yeah, everyone says, uh, you know, thanks. It's, you sound just like my mother. So, I, <laughs> but in this case, it's well deserved. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you for that. Um, so I want to sort of tie together a, a bunch of things uh, for you, and I'm going to give a nephrologist perspective. But I, I don't think it's really a nephrologist perspective. I think I've become a lupologist. I work very closely with our rheumatology division. We've developed a, a multidisciplinary um, group that sees patients with autoimmune diseases, and we've been working together for years. These are my disclosures, and I, I will be talking about medications. Of course, I want to talk about the new medications, and I have worked with all of the companies. Um, but I'm going to give an objective uh, view, I hope. Uh, you'll find it that way. So, so uh, I want to sort of give a perspective of where we are right now. And as you all know, um, the FDA has approved vocalosporin for uh, and belumumab for the treatment of active lupus nephritis, whatever active means, and we'll talk about that a little bit later. Um, and adding vocalosporin or belumumab to background immunosuppression significantly increases the number of complete uh, lupus nephritis uh, responses at uh, one or two years. And I don't want to belabor these data because I think you've seen them all. Uh, but on the left is the uh, Belumumab trial, and uh, they had two endpoints. The primary endpoint was called the uh, primary efficacy renal response, and then complete renal response, which is sort of what you are all and we are all used to thinking about. Um, the difference is that the PERR was a little bit more relaxed than the CRR in terms of the target level of proteinuria and the, uh, uh, the decline that would be acceptable in terms of serum creatinine. But as you can see here, in both responses, the Belumumab, the Belumumab arm gave about a 10% higher uh, renal response uh, rate uh, than the placebo arm, and this was uh, highly statistically significant. I uh, took the data from both the phase two um, vocalosporin trial and the phase three vocalosporin trial and combine them because in the um, low dose arm, which was, was used in the phase three that got accepted uh, by the FDA, uh, was identical to the phase two. And this, this gave a total of, of, of over 500 patients. And you can see here that there's a nice uh, statistically significant increase in uh, responses at six months, and this uh, actually increases uh, further at one year, as we would expect. Now, the other thing that is uh, good, of course, is that adding this third immunosuppressive to already potent immunosuppression can be done safely. Uh, I realize this might be a little bit small. Uh, this is the uh, safety report from the uh, Bliss LN trial. This is from the uh, Vocalosporin trials. And as you can see, uh, I've highlighted a couple of ones here. These are treatment related severe adverse events, uh, no difference 
in the two arms. Uh, these are infections of special, uh, all infections and then in infections of special interest were not different. And similar findings in the Voclosporin trial. And then finally, uh, I wanna pull out an old paper. This is uh, from 2008. This is, a, a, I love this paper. It, it, it was done by the group at Rush and they looked at kidney survival over a very long period of time in patients who achieve a complete renal response, a partial or no response. And you can see if you've achieved a complete renal response, you tend to have uh, retained kidney function over the long term. If you don't respond, of course, as expected, you really don't do very well over the long term. And um, this is really the interesting part, and it's really flummoxed uh, the FDA. Uh, partial response is certainly better than a complete response, but you can see that there's a huge difference uh, in terms of loss of kidney uh, or, or kidney uh, death over time. And uh, I think that's really important to keep in mind as we go forward. So as of today, we could just treat everyone with background immunosuppression plus belumumab or voclosporin. And I think that's a fair statement. There's always a but. In medicine, I think there's always a but. Uh, which drug we should add on, we have no biomarkers to identify who's going to benefit most from belumumab or voclosporin. The new medications don't really reduce background immunosuppression burden for lupus nephritis patients. And while in these short-term studies, uh, adding them to background therapy is safe in the short-term, long-term safety data are lacking. I'm going to mitigate that a little bit. I think you all know that you've been using belumumab for non-renal lupus for a long time, and it, it truly does have a very good long-term um, uh, safety record, and I expect the same thing would be true uh, in patients with lupus nephritis. However, adding on uh, to background therapy increases, uh, I use in quotation marks, the pill burden because you can give the uh, belumumab a sub-Q, uh, but it really increases the polypharmacy for patients who already are adherence challenged, and I think we'll all agree to that. Um, and, and then these medications are very costly, as you know, and that's going to probably be a barrier, not probably, is a barrier uh, for many patients, not just in this country, but of course in other countries as well. Uh, finally, a significant proportion of patients are going to respond to background therapy alone. I think a deeper dive into these trials is really informative, and I'm going to show you some data that I think maybe you have seen, but maybe not. They're just emerging, and I think they're very interesting to put things into perspective.